trust and cooperation are really important here. The problem with concepts of trust and cooperation is that they are feelings; they're not instructions. I can't simply say to you, "Trust me," and you will. I can't simply instruct two people to cooperate, and they will. It's we evolved into social animals, where we live together and work together in what I call a circle of safety, inside the tribe, where we felt like we belong. And when we felt safe amongst our own, the natural reaction was trust and cooperation. There are inherent benefits to this. It means I can fall asleep at night and trust that someone from within my tribe will watch for danger. If we don't trust each other, if I don't trust you, that means you won't watch for danger. Bad system of survival. The modern day is exactly the same thing. The world is filled with danger, things that are trying to frustrate our lives or reduce our success, reduce our opportunity for success. It could be the ups and downs of an economy, the uncertainty of the stock market. It could be a new technology that renders your business model obsolete overnight. Or it could be your competition. We have no control over these forces. These are a constant, and they're not going away. The only variable are the conditions inside the organization, and that's where leadership matters, because it's the leader that sets the tone. When a leader makes the choice to put the safety and lives of the people inside the organization first, to sacrifice their comforts and sacrifice the tangible. Results so that the people remain and feel safe and feel like they belong. Remarkable things happen. You see, if the conditions are wrong, we are forced to expend our own time and energy to protect ourselves from each other, and that inherently weakens the organization. When we feel safe inside the organization, we will naturally combine our talents and our strengths and work tirelessly to face the dangers outside and seize the opportunities. Charlie Kim, who's the CEO of a company called Next Jump. In New York City, a tech company. He makes the point that if you had hard times in your family, would you ever consider laying off one of your children? We would never do it. Then why do we consider laying off people inside our organization? It's the complete opposite. This is the reason so many people have such a visceral hatred, discon- sort of anger at some of these banking CEOs with their disproportionate salaries and bonus structures. It's not the numbers. It's that they have violated the very definition of leadership. They have violated this deep-seated social contract. We know that they allowed their people to be sacrificed so that they could protect their own interests, or worse, they sacrificed their people to protect their own interests. This is what so offends us. Not the numbers. Great leaders would never sacrifice the people to save the numbers. They would sooner sacrifice the numbers to save the people. We call them leaders because they go first. We call them leaders because they take the risk before anybody else does. We call them leaders because they will choose to sacrifice so that their people may be safe and protected, and so his, their people may gain. And when we do, the natural response is that our people will sacrifice for us. They will give us their blood and sweat and tears to see that their leader's vision comes to life. And when we ask them, "Why would you do that? Why would you give your blood and sweat and tears?" For that person, they all say the same thing. Because they would have done it for me. And isn't that the organization we would all like to work in? Is enough to make many people cringe, but today one Ottawa dentist made the pain and the cost a little bit easier to swallow.
give back to the community. Small little time, right? We're just trying to help people.